Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel and if you're new, here we share good food from a Geordie kitchen. This is your weekly recap of everything we've been having for tea this week, starting from last Monday, going all the way through to Sunday. So on Monday we had a cheeky little Burger King. <laughs> so we had a, I don't know what the burger was called, I'll link it down below, but it was a double, double patty with onion rings in. And we got some fries with that and some extra onion rings on the side. These are the onion rings. Onion rings, they're okay, but they were a bit squidgy. <laughs> I like them crispy, but they were alright. It was nice not to cook. <laughs> And the burger had some onion rings inside it as well and bacon and barbecue sauce it was very nice very filling though so on tuesday we had an enchilada kit from old el paso to use up so we just had that just followed the instructions exactly and had it with a bit of rocket and watercress salad. Nice and quick and easy. So that was Tuesday. So on Wednesday we had a meaty feast gnocchi bake. Just for change instead of pasta. I thought what, why not try and use a gnocchi instead. I just used a pre-made jar of pasta sauce and all the meat you would find on a meaty feast pizza. These sausages, with them being skinless, I thought we could roll them into little balls, but they didn't work. <laughs> I don't know what they've done to the sausages, but they didn't they didn't crumble, you know, like normal sausage meat would. So there's some frozen cooked chicken there, and there's the gnocchi. That's the fresh gnocchi from Tesco and the cheese we use mozzarella so it was more like a pizza and some pepperoni so I pre-fried the, the sausage just to seal it in it's funny how it didn't crumble. Next time I'm going to use the proper sausage and just skin it. I'll get some sausage meat. So this is what I did. I just layered it all up with the sauce in a dish. All straight from the packet. I didn't bother to cook the gnocchi to parboil it and I just used the chicken from frozen as well and the sausage And I just kept going until it was right at the top. Just laying all the different meats and knocky down. And then going over with the sauce, different points. This was very nice. It was a nice change. So when I got to the top, I just put some extra meat 
on the top and then covered it all with cheese and mozzarella. And that had 40 minutes in the oven at 180. It's very saucy. <laughs> but delicious, very nice. Even my son liked this one. <laughs> Just a bit of salad on the side, some mixed, le mixed leaves. <laughs> And those are the new toppers, salad toppers. These were like seeds, garlic and herb flavoured seeds. Very good. And these are the new garlic bread we got last week. The garlic ciabatta. They're very good, but they were very thick, very stodgy. So that was plenty to have that night. So. On Thursday we had just a mince pie and some chips. We didn't have gravy on, we had sauce, <laughs> brown sauce and some bread and butter and those are the, the home style chips. Just showing you the crunch, they're very crunchy, they're lovely. It's a nice quick tea. So on Friday I made Philly cheese steak bake. I just started this off by roasting some wedges, seasoning them. The, I used three of these sized potatoes. Just cut them into wedges. And then give them a spray with some oil and I used some old beer seasoning. seasoning. <laughs> Just sprinkled it over. Gave them half an hour in the oven. And this is them after half an hour. And then all you do is you make a cheese sauce. You can absolutely use a packet sauce if you want to. So I made my cheese sauce with almond milk. And you get some steak and cut the steak into strips or cubes, however you want it. Normally I would buy the steak already made, but they didn't have any, so that's the size of the chunks, strips, <laughs> that I used. And then just give them a bit of colour, seal them all over. And then I took an onion and put it in the meat juices and just got them charred a bit but not cooked through because I wanted them to be still a bit crunchy. A Philly cheesesteak has also green pepper in but nobody likes green pepper in the house so we didn't put that in. This is just some onion relish. Just pop that in. It's about half of half a jar. And then you want to mix all of your ingredients together, your wedges, your cheese and your steak and your onions and then just what I did was I layered it up and I laid two layers just so the steak was distributed properly and then I put some cheese sauce on the top just to finish and some red Leicester because I thought the red Leicester was more more in keeping with the, the colour of a cheesesteak. <laughs> and it's a nice change. It was absolutely delicious. We had it with those bake at home mini bread baguettes and some salad. It was delicious. Very tasty. And there it is from the oven. 
some crispy onions on the top there as well, I don't know if you can see them. That was lovely. The onions still had plenty of crunch in them as well. Very savoury and very comforting, just delicious. And some salad. So that was Friday. So on Saturday we had meatloaf. Now I'll link the recipe below for the, the recipe that we use. Never fails. The only difference to the recipe that I, the amendment that I make is I use half beef and half pork mince. But everything else I follow exactly. And it's never failed, it's delicious. Especially that top, that glaze. So we have that with lots of creamy mash. And there's the meatloaf slice there. Comes out lovely, the texture's wonderful. It never falls apart or anything, it's lovely. So I've put some away in the freezer as well. For another time so there's some sweet corn on there you can make gravy on it we didn't want the gravy but you could make some gravy to go over that so on Sunday we had just a, a nice roast loin of pork Sunday dinner lots of veg on this one this turnip some white cabbage there's the loin of pork it was beautiful I cut that massive joint that I got I cut that in half and I put the rest in the freezer we're gonna have Chinese Chinese roast pork with that another time and that's just some stuffings just some sage and onion and I forgot about the cauliflower <laughs> And they're just tinned carrots because my youngest likes those the best. And they're the Miss, Mr. Howie's roast potatoes and they were beautiful. And his tip said, he said to use very hot oil but just sunflower oil, vegetable oil and salt to get them crispy. And those are just pre-made Yorkshire puddings because I didn't have any eggs. And homemade gravy. And that was delicious. So this is dessert. We've got the beastie out, the beastie um, slow cooker, <laughs> the huge one. So this is vanilla flavoured milkshake. Use the full bottle. This was heavenly. I usually use um, chocolate milkshake but we thought we'd try this one for a change this way and this is pudding rice I used about a quarter of a packet and it fed four of us just give that a stir and about two teaspoons of vanilla because we're going to put some cream in and it'll dilute the taste a bit so that's a full carton of 300ml carton of double cream and 
and you want to keep an eye on this really keep stirring it every half hour and pop a lid on and this was on high and it took two hours but make sure you stir it otherwise it'll stick and clump and this was it after two hours and at this point you can turn it off and use a, a bag of chocolate chips white chocolate chips stir them through you don't need any sugar or anything because all of your sweeteners and everything is in your ingredients and it was beautiful so we had that with some raspberry jam that was a nice raspberry jam that very soft but beautiful very fruity and Mr Howie made some of his oaty biscuits so we had one of those tucked in as well on the side so I hope you've enjoyed this week's meals of the week and I will be back on Thursday with another haul there's the biscuits so until then take care everybody and I'll see you soon thanks for watching bye bye